Hi everybody, this is Rob Chastner and this video I want to describe some of the Jewish history and Jewish culture behind uh, a couple of phrases that we read about in the New Testament. The first phrase is uh, comes from uh, the Gospel of John chapter 19 verse 30 where it says when he received the drink Jesus said it is finished with that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit all right so the key words there it is finished and then if we continue on in the book of Luke the gospel of Luke chapter 22 verse 69 uh, it refers to, but from now on, the Son of Man, that would be the Lord, the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, the Son of Man, will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. Now, there's also a reference to that in uh, Ephesians 1.20. It says he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at this at his right hand in the heavenly realms. And then in Colossians 3, verse 1, it talks about, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Uh, again, Christ is a, um, a title. It's, it's a Greek word. In Hebrew, it's Mashiach. In English, it's Messiah, or the one who saves. So it says, Since then you have been raised from Christ, sorry, raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Okay, so um, so the two key phrases that I intend to uh, cover in this video would be, it is finished and seated at the right hand of God in heaven. Those are the two things that I want to discuss, Jewish heritage, Jewish history. Uh, so that you can better understand. The first thing we have to do is we need to go back to um, early on in, um, in the Old Testament. What we need to do is we need to understand um, just getting my notes here. Um, okay. What we need to understand is what the job of the priests were in back, back in biblical times. Now, I did another video on this, <clears throat> but just as a quick review, the priests were in, the, in the, the temple, and when someone wanted to uh, repent of a sin or praise God, they would take a sin offering or they would take some kind of an offering, like an animal of some sort, and they would go to the steps of the temple and they would approach a priest and give their offering, request a prayer or request a praise to God. And then the priest would take that animal offering into the temple and um, and the priest would present that to God. And um, so there the priest was representing man to God. And then the priest would come back out saying something to the fact of God has received your offering or your prayer request or your praise and he thanks you and sends you on your way. Now the priest is representing God to man. So um, that's what the priests do. That's what we are to do. Those of us who are the body of believers and when we're out in the community, we're supposed to bring man to God and God to man. Uh, in our in our activities and our actions. So what's the point here? The priests, when they were working, when they were doing their work as a priest, they were always standing. They never sat down. They were standing. They were the go-between man and God and God and man. They were always standing when they worked. So now I'll tie this together. Jesus, Yeshua, came to the earth and he had a three-year ministry at a certain point of his life, the last three, three and a half years of his life, 
demonstrating how we are to live, how we, we are to act in a godly fashion. He performed all kinds of miracles. There were prophecies written all throughout the Old Testament about who he was and um, uh, all the things that he fulfilled in the Old Testament prophecy prophecies. Uh, the Jews back in those days, and even the Jews today, they need to, or they should be able to recognize who he was by his actions, and the fact that he fulfilled so many of the prophecies written in the Old Testament, going all the way back to Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman. So, um, so when Jesus finished doing his work, showing us how God the Father in heaven intended us to behave, and he did the ultimate sacrifice according to the uh, the feast of Passover, the perfect sacrifice or the per perfect sacrificial lamb. And he he fulfilled all of these prophecies. And then he was hanging on the pro the cross. He allowed himself to be crucified to pay the price for all sin of the world. The very last words he said is, "It is finished." And then it goes on to say these other verses I shared with you that he is now ascended after he was resurrected. He was in the ground for three days. He resurrected and then he ascended to heaven after 40 days uh, during the Feast of Pentecost or Shavuot or the counting of the Omer, uh, 40 days he spent and uh, right before Pentecost and um, went back to heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, tying this all together, Jesus finished all the work. When he said it is finished, it was finished because no further work is required from anyone in order to receive the gift, the grace of eternal salvation. All one needs to do is acknowledge and accept who Yeshua, Jesus, is, as scripture has presented him, that he is the Messiah. That's the acknowledgement and the acceptance that he is the Messiah. And uh, of course, the Apostle Paul added in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, it talks about in the church age uh, that Jesus died for your sins, was buried for three days, rose again, and then ascended to heaven. But the, the main ingredient uh, that we need to understand is acknowledging and accepting who Jesus is, who Yeshua is, and that's the Messiah. So he fulfilled everything that was required. All we are to do is to acknowledge and accept by a, by a, a, a profession of faith, then Nothing else is required. That's why he said it is finished. No further work is required. Now we get to the other verse where it talks about him being seated at the right hand in heaven of the Father. The reason he is seated is because the work is done. Can you see how that all ties together? There's no longer any requirement for work to be done. All that's necessary for eternal salvation is a confession of faith in order to receive e e salvation for eternity. The work is done. Yeshua came to this world. He did all of the work, and that's why he's seated. And you can look at one of my other videos called Melchizedek, the righteous king. He is the righteous king. There is no more, there's no other intercessors required, not by rabbis, not by priests. There's no in-between. Only Yeshua Jesus is in between you, your profession of faith and who he is, and God the Father in heaven. There you have it. So, to tie it together one last time, Yeshua Jesus said, it is finished because all the work is done. When the priest finishes the work, the righteous king, he finished the work, he then went and sat down at the right hand of God because there's no further work to be done. The priest no longer needs to stand. He is sitting. He will rise again at his second coming to come back and to give judgment for those who are stubborn, 
those who have turned from God and those who do not profess their faith in God. But, uh, but he will ultimately be seated once again during the millennial age where we will share time with him in fellowship. So there's no further work that needs to be done, just a confession or profession of faith. And it's as simple as saying, I can't do this by myself. You can say it right out loud to yourself right now. God, please help me. I cannot do this by myself. I give my life to you. I give my heart to you. And uh, you are the Lord of my life. And, uh, and uh, please come into my heart. It's as simple as that. And then you have professed or confessed your faith in God. And now you can start opening up the Bible, going to Bible study classes and learning God's word. In John 1, the Gospel of John 1, verse 1, it talks about uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So we know that the word from Genesis 1, 1 all the way till the end of Revelation, I think it's uh, chapter 22, verse 21. Uh, hopefully I quoted that correctly. And every word in between was words that were inspired by God through 40 different scribes to write it down so that we could understand who he is and what he's all about. So once you say the prayer, God, come into my life. I want to give my life to you. Now you've got eternal life, and now you devote and dedicate your life to behaving the way he gives us instruction to do in the Bible. Study the Bible. And you will grow closer in your relationship. And this is the beginning of eternity for you. So one last time, it is finished. There's no more work to be done. Just a confession or profession of faith in who Yeshua Jesus is, the Messiah. And then he went and sat down because the work was done. The priests only stood when there was work. There's no more work to be done. That's why he's seated to the right hand of God, the Father in heaven. So hopefully this was informative and helpful to you to understand the culture and the history all the way back into uh, the Old Testament, why Jesus said it is finished and why the Apostle Paul said in some of his letters that he is now seated at the right hand of God. Blessings to you. Amen. Thank you for watching.